All right, so I'm cleaning and organizing this shop and going back and forth, moving piles of shit to the top of the saw stop and these benches. And I'm looking at these benches and I'm thinking, God, it would be better to have one nice big bench on wheels instead of these two small ratty ones. So I took them apart and figured I could reuse the wood to make a larger nicer workbench. Once all the wood was disassembled and I checked everything for nails, I milled it all square and cleaned up all the surfaces and kind of figured out what I was going to do. Basically I was thinking of reusing all of these 4x4 pieces to make double thick legs that would hold up a more or less laminated top and some shelves underneath. And I would try to reuse as much of the wood and scrap from building out the shop as possible so that it wasn't a, uh, you know, a very expensive project. In fact, this didn't really cost me anything. The design was basically to, to glue up these legs and they had a little tenon that would notch into the uh, side of the skirt. And so the skirt would be supported on these legs and then the tabletop would be supported on the skirt. And I'm basically breaking every rule of bench construction in this project because I want to have a lip around the whole thing so I can clamp stuff along the edge instead of, uh, you know, clamping everything to the face, which is common on, in workbenches. Also, it's common to make a really thick laminated top. I did not have the wood for that, so I basically gathered up every bit of scrap I could find and put it together like a big Tetris so that I at least had some density to hammer against. And the last thing that is different or sort of against common bench production is I put the vise on the tail on the opposite side and I'll explain why I did that when we get to that section. The workbench is screwed together no fancy joinery here because this bench needed to exist and sort of a bench in the shop is better than two unfinished benches in the mind and uh, I think I it took a day and a half to build this so this was not a, a glamorous workbench project but the amount of space that it provided was huge here I'm milling up the braces for the lower shelf I'm doing a very small shelf just underneath the bench uh, so I could throw bins or wood scraps under there and then a much larger shelf at the very bottom with no real intention to what is going to go on these shelves just having some stash space I actually don't really want to have permanent storage under there more like project related items Oh yeah, also most benches don't have wheels or they if they do they have some sort of mechanism that allows you to lower the bench down, which I had on a workbench at one point and I really liked it. Uh, this I'm just using the wheel lock mechanism. If I really want to hammer on something, I can put some sawhorses up. Uh, I made some plugs here to fill the peg holes so that they it looks a little nicer. I mean, I don't want this to look like trash. I mean, it is jointed and planed, but it's not going to be, you know, the ultimate bench. Another little detail, just threw some chamfers around uh, all the edges so I, nothing is super sharp. Make it look a little nice, do a little sanding. Alright, so for the top, I had this large piece of scrap oak, and I figured I would screw and glue that down to the corners where I'd most likely be working hammering on something dense and then I basically cut to fit a bunch of different pieces of 2x4 pine to fill in the spaces between it. This is uh, definitely a budget bench build. Yes, I it would have been even possible to you know do a big glue up with some some bolts of pine or something to have make a much denser but I didn't really have the time or I did not want to spend a single cent on this. Uh, maybe I bought the casters, but otherwise this is just from found wood. And here you can kind of see the whole 
jigsaw puzzle getting glued, clamped together to form a solid wood surface on top of the bench. And then to unify the surface, I'm going to glue down this large piece of a decent grade plywood uh, that will have, uh, have one nice flat surface and not a bunch of stuff glued together. So I use the old Japanese boat builder's trick of clamping things against the ceiling of the shop, uh, but I used a car jack instead. The next day, took all the clamps off, trimmed all the wood around the outside of the bench, and then used a flush trim router bit to true up all the surfaces. Now at this point, the bench is basically usable, but I wanted to make it a little bit nicer, so I I ripped a couple strips of this fur, planed it into strips, uh, you know, nice thin strips, and uh, then put a mitered trim around the the edge so that it would block all the uh, the strange glue up boards and give give it a little bit of fit and finish. And once that trim was all dry. I gave it a little chamfer and moved on to a tiny bit of sanding and then beginning to test fit the vise. So the reason I'm putting the vise on the tail end of the opposite side is for two reasons. One, I can use the little dog hole that I built into this vise to clamp uh, boards lengthwise in a position that makes it easy to, to hand plane with the way that I hand plane um, standing to the the left of the board and also when I cut crossways the way I like to, to position when I hold the Japanese saw I like to have sort of some freedom in front of me and to the right so if I, where I'm standing right now working on this vise, if I'm cutting with my right hand and the leftover is sticking to the right of the bench, there's nothing in the way of the saw. The vise itself, this is a crazy story. I mean, I restored this vise several years ago. I pulled it out of an old um, sawmill that was falling apart in Baltimore. It had been completely rotted. You know, the whole place had rotted apart. It had been stripped of its electrical cables by crazy drug addicts. And their old workshop was there and some of the old lumber was there. And a friend of mine and I went in and liberated some of the beautiful wood from destruction. And um, then we also grabbed a couple of these vices and finally have a place to put it. Uh, it turns out all, all said and done, the little mechanism that tightens it up is doesn't stay super tight, but, you know, it is what it is. So a little coat of um, turpentine with boiled linseed oil to protect the wood and mounting the vise after much fitment and adjustment. And that is a workbench. So now I can start putting stuff all over the top of it. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you found this content helpful. Please consider supporting Never Stop Building by clicking that red subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when I make new videos. Even better is to become a Patreon where you can get early access to videos, plans and CAD models, and some other cool benefits. Uh, click the description below for a link. And always, never stop building.